हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम प्रोफेसर ईशा नेदेरता फ्रॉम एल जी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद द थर्ड चैप्टर ऑफ आर सिलेबस दैट इज सेमी कंडक्टर्स एंड टिल नाउ वी हैव कवर्ड प्रॉपर्टीज एंड टाइप्स ऑफ सेमी कंडक्टर्स वी हैव सीन द इक्विलिब्रियम कैरियर स्टैटिस्टिक्स एंड द फर्मी लेवल वेरिएशन विथ टेम्परेचर एंड कैरियर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन एंड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी डिस्कस अबाउट कैरियर जनरेशन एंड कैरियर रिकॉम्बिनेशन we also discussed what is carrier transport what are the different processes by which carriers flow in a semiconductor in today's video we are going to discuss about a pn junction diode so from here i will be starting with the types of diodes that we have to cover in our syllabus so starting with the pn junction diode what a pn junction diode is a pn junction diode is known as a two terminal device which allows electric current to flow only in one direction basically a pn junction diode is a semiconductor device why because it is formed by using pn n type semiconductors now what exactly it does it permits current to flow only in one direction that is what we are going to discuss today let's see how a pn junction diode looks so in the diagram you can see a pn junction diode the basic schematic symbol is represented by a triangle and a vertical line now this triangle represents the anode you can say the positive terminal and the vertical line means the cathode or the negative terminal just below it in the diagram you can see practically how a pn junction diode looks like so you can see a small cylinder having a silver colored ring now this silver colored ring indicates the cathode and the black portion of the cylinder it indicates the anode so basically if you talk about a pn junction diode a pn junction diode means it has a p type material an n type material so p type acts as anode n type acts as cathode and in between them there is a depletion layer now let's see how a pn junction diode is formed so a pn junction diode is formed when you fuse a p type semiconductor to an n type semiconductor creating a potential barrier voltage across the junction so how exactly this barrier potential or barrier voltage is created across a junction we'll just see so pn junction diode in the diagram you can say it has a p type semiconductor now the p type semiconductor has majority carriers as holes if you remember we discussed that p type is formed by addition of trivalent impurities which leads to more number of holes in the semiconductor whereas if you talk about an n type semiconductor it is formed by pentavalent impurities so they have electrons as majority carriers so when you fuse them together as shown in the diagram what exactly happens in between the yellow colored line in the diagram it indicates the junction exactly the point where both the semiconductors are fused now let's see what happens because of this junction creation now we know that n type has more electrons as seen in the diagram now just imagine a situation that in a certain volume there are many electrons together or i can say there is a majority of electrons at the n junction or at the n side so if more electrons are together what will they do they repel similarly just look at the p side if you talk about the p side it has electrons but they are minority the semiconductor will be ideal if you talk about p type doesn't mean it does not have any electrons similarly if you talk about n type doesn't mean it does not have any holes so p side has minority electrons and n side has minority holes just recall the process we discussed in carrier transport that is diffusion so exactly what is happening from a higher concentration that is from n region the electrons try to move to the p region in this case what happens which electrons actually move you are just creating a junction you are not providing any energy so in this case what happens exactly the electrons on the n side which are near the junction will try to cross the junction and come on the p side it is indicated by the minus sign in the diagram so all the electrons which are close to the junction they move to the p side now why the remaining electrons cannot move to the p side because the electrons which were near the junction which have moved on moved already on the p side now they repel the remaining electrons 
Similarly, if I say suppose seven electrons have moved on the p side, so seven holes have been created on the n side. Now these negative positive charges are seen in the diagram, they cancel out each other and this is what is known as the neutral layer in between. This neutral layer is known as the depletion layer. Generally the thickness is in micrometers. Remaining electrons without any energy cannot cross this neutral region and hence does not conduct if energy is not provided. Now let's see the forward bias of a p-n junction diode. Because the basic definition of a p-n junction diode says that p-n junction diode conducts only in one particular condition. So what do you mean by the forward bias of a p-n junction diode? It says that when external voltage is applied to a p-n junction diode, it cancels the potential barrier and it allows the flow of current. We say the junction is in forward bias. Now, why is it necessary to apply external voltage? Because of the depletion layer, constant flow of electrons is not possible and that is the reason we need to apply an external voltage. So, let's understand the forward bias condition with the help of this diagram. In this diagram, you can see the P side having majority holes, the N side majority electrons and in between them there is a depletion layer. We have just understood how the depletion layer is formed. What do you mean by forward bias condition? You can see from the diagram that P type semiconductor is connected to the positive terminal of battery and N type semiconductor is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So in this case, what is happening? Just consider the electrons on the N side. They are actually connected to the negative of the battery. So where will be, where will the electrons flow? They will be repelled by the terminal of battery and they will flow towards the junction. That means I say my majority carriers which are in N side electrons, they are moving towards the junction. Similarly, consider the holes. The holes that is majority in P type, they also move towards the junction. If you increase this applied voltage, slowly, slowly, you will see that the depletion layer is reducing and at one particular moment, the depletion layer will be eliminated. This particular voltage is what is known as threshold voltage. So I can say that forward bias is the condition in which current flows due to the majority carriers. And this flow of current due to majority carriers is what is known as forward current. So in short, we get forward current because the depletion layer is eliminated. Now let us see the second condition of a p-n junction diode that is known as the reverse bias. What do you mean by reverse bias? It says that when external voltage applied to a p-n junction diode increases the potential barrier and it opposes the flow of current, the junction is said to be reverse biased. How is the reverse bias connection done? In the diagram you can see the P terminal that is P type semiconductor is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and the N type semiconductor is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. Now how will the majority carriers flow in this case. Since our N type is connected to the positive terminal of the battery, when you increase the applied voltage, the electrons are going to flow towards the positive terminal. That means I can see the electrons are flowing away from the junction. Similarly, talking about holes, holes will flow towards the negative terminal of the battery. So again, I say my majority carriers are moving away from the junction. So slowly, slowly what happens? Electrons instead of moving towards, they are moving away from the junction and that increases the potential barrier. Now potential barrier means a neutral layer. You can say it acts like a resistance which is not allowing flow of current and hence we say that in reverse bias there is no current. There will be a small amount of current which flows due to majority, uh, which flows due to minority carriers. Now if we talk about N-type semiconductor, there are some holes present in minority which will flow towards the junction. Similarly, some electrons in P-type will flow towards the junction. But because they are minority, the value of this leakage current is very, very small. So this was a brief about forward and reverse bias of a P-N junction diode. Now let us move on to the next topic which is a part of P-N junction diode and that is known as energy band diagram. So it is a basic diagram which indicates 
valence band, conduction band, and in between them the forbidden band. So that is about if you talk about a p-type semiconductor, it will have valence, it will have conduction, and because it is a p-type, it will have an acceptor level. Similarly, if you talk about n-type, it will have valence band, conduction band, and a donor level. Now, we have discussed what a Fermi level is. In the topic of equilibrium carrier statistics, we discussed the derivation of EF for P and N type both. So, talking about the Fermi level of N type, in an N type semiconductor, the conduction takes place between the donor and conduction level. So, EF will be closer to the conduction band. Similarly, if you talk about a P type semiconductor, the conduction takes place between the valence and the acceptor level. So, I say the Fermi level of P type will be close to the valence band. Now let's have a look at the energy band diagram when you say a junction is formed. So let's see the energy band diagram. On the left side of the diagram you can see P type energy band. On the, end, uh, on the right side you can see the N type energy band diagram. Both of them have valence bands and conduction bands. Now we know that N type has uh, electrons in majority and where are they present? They are present in the conduction band. Similarly, P type has holes as uh, P type has holes as majority and where are these holes present? They are present in the valence band. In between them, what we are doing is we are just combining the energy band diagrams of P and N both. In between them, you can just see a slope or a steep which is going from N to P. What does this indicate? It indicates the barrier. It indicates the depletion layer. Now there is a golden rule. When you say that your junction is made, whatever material you are using to make the junction, both of them should have Fermi level at the same level. And we know that for a P-type, Fermi level is at a lower level. For an N-type, because it is close to the conduction, it is at a higher level. And so there is a mismatch. To balance the Fermi levels, we can say we get a steep in the energy band diagram. So this steep or this barrier has to be reduced if we want conduction. Now let's understand the working of PN junction diode with the help of energy band diagram. So let us first discuss the case of reverse bias. In this case, you can see that electrons in the conduction of N-type are not able to move to P-type because we are not providing any energy. Or you now let's see what happens if you talk about forward bias. Forward bias, you can see from the diagram that electrons, because energy is provided, depletion layer reduces and the electrons are moving on to the valence band of P-type. So I say electrons from N recombine with the holes in P. So electrons cross the barrier and move to the P-side, that means your diode is conducting. Now let us discuss IV characteristics of a PN junction diode. That means varying the voltage, how current varies. So what do you mean by IV characteristics? It is the relation between the voltage across the diode and the current flowing through it. So whatever voltage we are applying as an external supply, there will be a voltage across the diode. You plot the diode voltage with respect to current, you get the IV characteristics of a PN junction diode. So coming on to the IV characteristics in forward bias condition, we have, this is just a recap of the connection in forward bias. So can you see in the diagram that negative terminal of the diode, that is N-type, the cathode part is connected to the negative terminal of battery and the anode is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. So in this case, because we know that forward bias condition, we have the flow of majority carriers, we say that our diode is short-circuited. That means I have just replaced the diode with a short circuit, indicating the flow of current. In the diagram below, you can see that the majority carriers are moving towards the junction and you get a flow of current and the depletion barrier reduces. Now let's understand the graph. So we are plotting the graph with forward voltage on the x-axis and forward current in milliampers for the, on the y-axis. Now, how does the voltage and current vary? They vary in this manner. 
till a certain value of voltage you get negligible current and then you can see in the graph that suddenly the value of current increases i can say that the exact value of voltage corresponding to sudden increase in current is what is known as threshold voltage which is denoted as vth now if you talk about pn junction diodes there are basically two categories of pn junction diode one that uses silicon second that uses germanium talking about the threshold voltage for silicon it is around 0.7 volts and talking about the threshold voltage of germanium it is around 0.3 volt what does that mean for a silicon pn junction diode 0.7 is the voltage at which you get a sudden increase in current or i can say 0.7 voltage is the voltage at which my depletion layer is completely gone now let us move ahead with reverse bias characteristics so this is what reverse bias characteristics of a pn junction diode you can clearly see from the diagram that the anode is connected to the negative of battery and cathode is connected to the positive of battery in this case what happens instead of majority carriers moving towards the junction the majority carriers move away from the junction and your diode will act like an open circuit you can see the open circuit is indicated which means there is no flow of current in the diagram below it is clearly seen that the depletion layer width has increased because the majority carriers move away from the junction and so there is no current now let's understand the graph of reverse bias so reverse bias we have plotted reverse voltage on the minus x axis and reverse current on the minus y axis and this is the variation of current in case of in case of a pn junction diode there is leakage current which we just discussed due to the minority carriers so that is indicated in microamperes now this leakage current if you talk about silicon diodes it is in nanoamperes that is negligible and if you talk about germanium it is in microamperes now let us move ahead and discuss the applications of pn junction diode so pn junction diode is used in clamping circuits for restoring dc components it is used in clipping circuits for wave shaping you want to clip a certain part of a wave a pn junction diode can be used next it is used in voltage multipliers to multiply the value of voltage it is also used as switches and rectifiers the basic function of a pn junction diode is to provide switching action because it gives current only in forward bias and not in reverse bias so the basic function is rectification and switching and lastly it is used in digital logic gates the digital logic gates can also be designed using a pn junction diode so this was about the applications of pn junction diode so in today's video we have discussed what a pn junction diode is how the barrier or depletion layer is formed what are the conditions in which the pn junction diode gives us output we have also discussed the energy band diagram and the iv characteristics of a pn junction diode hope you have understood all the topics i covered today very well in my coming video i will be starting with zener diode that is a special kind of pn junction diode till then take care thank you